Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this video series. Uh, in the previous three videos, we discussed with Leonid Datta, who is from India and currently finished his master's in TU Delft, Netherlands in Computer Science, Data Science. Uh, in the previous three videos, we discussed about his master's experience in data science, teaching assistant, how he got a teaching assistant, and about the part-time jobs, jobs and internships. In this video, we'll specifically focus on master thesis, not on his master thesis, but in general, the experience of doing a master thesis in Netherlands, because thesis is very essential essential as I've said many times in different videos. So maybe moving on to the first question, uh, instead of making it very specific, maybe share your experience like uh, how is the thesis and how did you approach it or did you have anything in your mind like okay I should spend this much time because it's very flexible. So even though on books like for example in my case you can spend nine months but sometimes people allocate more time for their thesis fearing that they might need it, maybe because of different circumstances. So what is your experience? Yeah, in the data science course, uh, it depends on the number of credits in the thesis. Like in some of the courses, it's 30 credits. Uh, so technically, it's a semester course or, or a two-quarter course. Uh, and uh, for the data science uh, course, it's a 45-credit thesis. Uh, which is kind of a nine months, but that's the time uh, you are ideally uh, allo allocated to work or or which one they count as uh, the amount of work you put on, uh, put on it. So uh, that's the time range, but it doesn't matter how much time you uh, you spend on it. What counts is you how much effort you, you have put on it and, and is that eff effort worth enough for a 45 credit, uh, credit thesis or whatever credit uh, you have in your thesis. So I was almost done with the courses, uh, like almost like uh, some, uh, almost 70 credits in my first year. So I had uh, more time to spend on my thesis, but uh, it's very uh, usual that uh, you, your thesis gets uh, uh, delayed for one or two months. So that's a very usual case. But if you're working sincerely, it, it, gets, it gets done with it within the proper amount of time. So uh, I think uh, while starting, uh, so for me, I knew that I want to do in machine learning, but yeah, so exactly which part of machine learning, if we uh, take machine learning as an umbrella term, uh, so then I didn't uh, decide computer vision before coming here. While doing the course of deep learning, I, uh, I was getting associated with the course and then I approached the professor and then I did with uh, Professor Yan. So, uh, start, but if you are not sure that which is the track you want to choose, I think from the first year of the course, you need to keep a, keep an eye uh, on okay, which actually, the, which is the course that I find most interesting. For example, I did some course like complex network and networking, but these are the courses that I did only for credits, but the, I didn't find it much interesting. So it's very important to know your interests because uh, mostly the job you get uh, is more based on your thesis and they put a lot of uh, effort on your thesis. They put a lot of more weight to, to the work you have done on your thesis while applying for a job if you're not going for a normal software development job. So that's very important. And uh, you keep on talking to the professor, let him know that you are interested in this topic ask him that does he have uh, a topic in mind or maybe he can ask you that okay write a topic and come to me or uh, or e even there are professors who do not uh, conduct courses uh, like my housemate did it uh, with a professor who was not actually in a course uh, in fact first i talked to one of the professors and uh, she was new to tu tu delft and she came here just one month before that so uh, I went through her research and found her, found it interesting and emailed her. Uh, they they usually respond to your email if he's not uh, like extremely busy. So they give you an allotted time and just go and meet him or her and uh, talk to them and let them know your interest in background. Uh, if they ask that, okay, uh, this one course maybe you would have to do or so maybe sometimes they uh, they give you the material and ask you that okay just uh, go through it maybe you don't have to pass the exam uh, but uh, you don't know you need to know these uh, these background information before uh, starting your thesis uh, it's very rare but sometimes they teach you as well so uh, that's the approach you do to your professor 
uh, but i think uh, while for doing or for choosing your master thesis topic it's very important to uh, know your interest because on a single topic of a huge uh, of a huge field uh, of or, or a huge research field you are spending your nine months and after four or five months uh, the topic you like the most uh, becomes your, your nightmare and you start hating it <laughs> but uh, you you struggle a lot and that is how you learn so at least it's very important to love your thesis topic when you start so that uh, that's the common approach uh, to a thesis i i would say yeah so the problem with uh, the thesis and also if we talk if you see it it's an advantage as well because uh, there is no pressure and here the professors won't be behind you that you should work or you are not working which we are very used to uh, this is not the case they don't care because they are not dependent on your thesis <laughs> so especially for my professor uh, he is a very famous professor and he has more than 15 students uh, in master thesis and i think more than 10 phd students so it's and he told it at very first stage it's your responsibility to complete it i won't be behind you so that's a good thing that you don't have a pressure on your head but also that's a very bad thing because you don't feel how time passes so if he, so you are you are supposed or you are expected to spend 40 hours a week uh, maybe you don't uh, have to measure the time but uh, at the at least at the end of one week uh, make a calculation that the amount of work i did is it a 40 hours work so uh, i think that is very important because the time will pass and you will want at one time you feel that yeah i didn't put much effort in it so that is how you do it here usually that uh, you have to calculate the hours maybe not exactly the 39 or 40 but uh, but see if you are putting effort because uh, you you think when especially when you start you have some energy and you are uh, new to the to the field or new to the research after one or two months you feel like yeah i'm doing it but i have eight more months to spend so you become a, a bit lazy uh, because in a course of uh, two and a half months or the seven weeks uh, in a quarter you know that after three weeks i have the exam i have to pass it i have to get six here you have the exam uh, or the thesis defense after nine months so you don't feel the pressure but um, if you if you spend if you don't spend the the time properly then after eight months you will feel that i have one month left and yeah i haven't done it properly and also the professor won't be happy because they are very uh, strict about the quality of thesis i mean they won't calculate the number of months you have spent uh, they will also they will always uh, calculate the amount of work you have done so that's i guess the more or less the approach to the thesis and uh, it's definitely rigorous and difficult uh, all, also uh, the thesis defense is not very easy uh, the professor will always uh, counter uh, will counter your claims your assumptions uh, they will always always question them and you have to prepare those answers and also the writing writing the thesis is uh, also a difficult part for me it was a bit easier because my professor wanted it in a very short way so it, he wanted it in a in the form of a 8 to 10 page scientific article but most time the thesis is very long it's 50 60 till 150 pages in some of the departments it's mandatory for them to write a 100 to 150 page uh, page thesis so it's definitely difficult and rigorous but also there is no one uh, asking for you to do things. So I think the most difficult part is to stay motivated, which is true for the PhD as well. So uh, you have to stay motivated on a four to five year PhD. Okay. Uh, yeah, you already talked about the thesis defense. So uh, just to make it clear for people who are hearing this term for the first time, maybe uh, most of you already know it. So it's like just like a PhD here in master thesis also, although it is a smaller one, you have a committee which consists of internal and external people. And before them, you need to give a short presentation of your entire duration of your thesis work. And then they ask you some questions based on that which you need to defend. Uh, so you already mentioned about your experience of master thesis uh, defense. 
So moving on to the uh, next I think question. I didn't include the master thesis defense. Uh, so defense is uh, difficult, definitely a difficult task because uh, the professors uh, are very, uh, are very, very knowledgeable, and they ask you, they counter your claims, uh, and they will ask you research questions uh, that you have these assumptions and how did you come to it? Maybe about the research design. Uh, so that that's also about stress handling, which I'm kind of bad of bad at because yeah so i fainted five days uh, before my thesis defense because i took too much stress and uh, yeah so that so that also happens uh, but yeah so i mean you don't need to worry about that one uh, yeah the stress handling is a part of research and yes yeah, so so, so i guess everyone try to be careful about this don't put too much stress on your yeah. But it's, okay. I think I fainted. But there is, it's a very uh, it's a very common uh, to have a lot of stress at the at the at the at the last stage of the research work. I mean, now, now I'm seeing my friends who are defending down, and everyone is like tensed. But it depends on that uh, how much stress you can handle. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Uh, so my professor, uh, he is very busy, and I had to take appointments with him. He has half an hour slot, and uh, that's the, all the time you get to within I think around in two weeks so i had uh, two supervisors i mean one was a professor and one was a daily supervisor so it's advisable to meet your uh, daily supervisor once a week but it de it is extremely dependent on on the professor so for my professor he said that uh, that meet once uh, in a, in two weeks and he had very less time so i had to make an appointment of half an hour and if it is half an hour then uh, the next person will be ready so you have to plan your meeting like that you have to be extremely efficient in 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 meeting him because uh, you you get half an hour time of him and you have to use it and the the way you use it is dependent on you so uh, that is about the meeting the professor and i think uh, regarding uh, regarding the supervision uh, it, they will always ask you for a plan, but it is not uh, very. It's not very strictly followed. So it's very it's very good to have a plan, uh, but uh, it's not that if I make a plan and I have to follow it. For example, my thesis topic we started with uh, with quite a different topic and we ended up somewhere else, and that is also fine. Though it is not advisable for a PhD, it's a master thesis, so it was possible for a PhD. It's not, and it's not a very good practice as well. So uh, that is about the supervision, and uh, I think uh, it is very important to know your background and uh, what you talk in the in the in those meetings because your professor is busy doing something else in the rest of the hours, you know, and you suddenly reach your professor. The professor doesn't have your thesis on the on the top of his head. So when you when you re when you meet your professor. Uh, make a good plan of using that half an hour or one hour time you get. So I think these plannings, I was very bad at these plannings when I started because there was no one to tell these things to me. And also they don't expect you to know uh, all of the details. But uh, as the time passes, he will expect you uh, to follow some of the more restrictions. Like uh, at the at the first, uh, I used to uh, reach my uh, my daily supervisor with uh, small issues which later I found was very stupid questions. I mean, if someone asked me these things, uh, I will say, yeah, so go and read the literature properly. <laughs> but uh, but uh, they will allow these things when you start working on uh, at very first or second months. Uh, but they will expect you to grow uh, or to be more matured uh, in, in with your questions as the time passes. And I think uh, that's the main contribution of a research work when you especially end for a PhD after your master's. So the person you are in at the first of your master's thesis, at the first month of your master's thesis, uh, sh should not be the same person when you graduate. Your maturity level uh, is expected to, to be almost double. I think uh, that's the main contribution of the master's thesis because basically they prepare you for a PhD if we talk in terms of a researcher's perspective. Okay, that's a very uh, good way of putting it. Uh, and I think 
if i talk about the independence uh, the professor will always give you a space to talk and preach your ideas uh, which is very contrary to india uh, in india it's uh, at least i don't i don't have much idea about the top institutions like iisc or uh, or iits but in our university or uh, usually uh, the normal uh, standard universities in india you don't have much space in your research and the professor has the final say uh it's exactly the opposite uh, here you are colleague to your professor and you always have a have a permission or you always have a right to say no to what your professor suggests and you always have to criticize your professor and they appreciate it a lot that you don't need to follow what i say uh, you have to put your ideas uh, but uh, yeah definitely the uh, so the professor will be your, will be your supervisor not your guide so i think uh, that's a very terminological difference between both of the countries and which is uh, which is true to uh, which is true for the culture uh, for the work culture as well so in india we say is my guide and here it's your supervisor so he supervises you but he won't he will uh, he will never guide you to the solution okay because uh, when you start a thesis he doesn't know the solution either he is also finding with you yeah okay so moving on to the final question uh, if i understand correctly uh, your thesis was university based right yeah because i have said that in many videos like some people also do a thesis which is with a industry uh, and normally in industrial thesis you also get a salary depending on the company or work like somewhere in the range of 6000 to 1000 euros or maybe 1200 as you mentioned in some internships just similar salaries so yeah so was it like you had in that in your mind from the beginning because i also say like if you want to do a phd ideally doing a thesis in the university is recommended but there can be a way around it depends on what is your field of work so what was your uh, thought process when you started like did you also look for industrial thesis or from the beginning you were sure that you are going to do a thesis with the university yeah so uh, i think uh, i already said that uh, yeah so i had an internship opportunities at the abn amro where they were uh, they were uh, ready to pay for my Uh, they, they were ready to sponsor my my master thesis as well but since i always i always had a aim to become a researcher and do a phd so i talked to a lot of people who are doing phd here uh, like i talked to avigyan singh who recently become a, become a professor in tu delft so he was doing his post doc then and uh, so they suggested me that uh, I, yeah so i didn't follow your video at that time i guess but uh, i think they suggested me to do a do a uh, industrial thesis here uh, uh, sorry a, a university based thesis if you want to go up go for a phd yeah so that is that is why actually i said no to that avn amro yeah it was a difficult decision it's a lot of money and uh, in fact they told that we may sponsor your phd as well but they were not ready to define my uh, my my project before i joined so i think that's very important when you do a thesis there should be a predefined project when you join for a thesis a, a industrial thesis which was lacking in the abn amro thing as well they told me that you join we will put you in a project and then we will let you know uh, what kind of project we can uh, we can sponsor you for your master thesis and also for phd later uh, so the problem with this is uh, the professor needs to agree you need to find a professor who agrees with this uh, industrial uh, thesis which becomes difficult if they don't uh, explain or they don't provide you with the details of the thesis before you start so when you have a in plan for industrial thesis always ask them for a specific research question that you want to answer and they they also want the answer of of that question as well so otherwise some companies what they do is they they take the people and they do their project they let uh, the student do their project work but uh, they don't uh, they, they don't want to share the data with the professor some of the companies has restriction on the amount of information or amount of method you can share on on a publication because the professor will always want uh, a publication from it because that's the contribution you, you make to research and that is the degree you get at well you contribute something to science that was that is why you gave a you, you get a masters of science uh, degree so i think these are the topics uh, or these are the things that you uh, need to keep in your mind when you when you go for a industrial uh, thesis 
and if for a university based thesis it's easier because definitely the professor has the highest say on it uh, so if uh, if pursuing a phd is your option or you want to stay in research uh, the university based uh, research is is more advisable but definitely it's possible to do a phd even if we have done an industrial industry based research or it's opposite case as well it's always uh, possible to to have a job after you have done a done a industry uh, done a university based uh, research okay okay good to know so in short you you, you can say like um, the both parties should agree if you want to do industrial thesis both parties should have some kind of agreement beforehand before you start the thesis uh, if you want to do industrial thesis so thank you for giving your time for the uh, talking about the way people do master thesis in netherlands uh, in the next video we'll talk very briefly about his thesis in computer vision because his work is like a subset of data science which is in computer vision so till next video uh, don't forget to smash the like button if you like this video share this video help each other out subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed thank you leonid for giving your time goodbye from netherlands